This lecture will cover forward markets and contracts. So let's just first understand what is a forward contract or as it's sometimes referred to what is a forward contract position. Now in very simple terms a forward contract is a contract between two parties let's 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 just call one party the long and the other party the short so let's say we have party a which is long and party b which is called the short party essentially in a forward contract party a which is long makes a commitment to buy something from party b which is short at a certain point in time for a certain price so let's take a very very simple forward position let's say that party a and party b get into a contract and let's call it a 90 day contract which means that if today is time zero then at time 90 which is 90 days from a, a from today a will buy one stock of ift for dollars 100 so this is the contract that on day 90 party a which is long now long part the long party is the party that is making a commitment to buy so remember long means the party is committing to buy and party b which is short is making a commitment to sell so in essentially a forward contract we have the following we need to say the contract is signed on time zero but no money changes hands at time zero and in this signed contract we are saying that A is making a commitment to buy one share of IFT from party B which is the short party so the short party is making a commitment to sell a very simple way to remember this is short S for short S for sell so the short party is the one that is committing to sell long party is the one that's committing to buy the underlying asset here which is sometimes referred to simply as the underlying is one share of ift and the contract price which is the price at which a will buy from b is 100 so now all these terms over here will make sense so i'm repeating this several times but it will help you understand so long position is the position that A has taken. This is a commitment that A will buy. Short position is the position that B has taken. This is a commitment that B will sell. Now A and B are also referred to as counterparties. So from A's perspective, B is the counterparty. And from B's perspective, A is the counterparty. In the context of forward contracts, you will hear the term dealer and end user so a dealer is an entity typically a large financial institution which essentially creates these contracts or essentially acts as a dealer or the counterparty for end users end users could be any corporation that wants to hedge its risk or end user could also be another financial institution so let's take a very simplistic scenario so your end user might be a corporation that desperately wants to own a share of ift after 90 days and it does not want to worry about what the price will be it doesn't want to take the risk of this price going too high so in order to mitigate that risk the end user let's say which is abc corp so the end user gets into a contract with uh, with a forward contract dealer so let's say that that's xyz bank so abc corp gets into a contract with uh, xyz bank to essentially abc gets into a long position here and the bank which is acting as a dealer gets into a short position so in simple terms dealers are entities that actually deal in forward contracts in pakistan typically financial institutions such as uh, standard chartered bank ubl etc 
are authorized dealers for uh, derivatives oriented contracts end users could be any corporation as well as financial institutions could also act as end users in a forward contract as mentioned earlier when two counterparties get into a forward contract nothing no money changes hands at time zero so essentially at time zero the two parties simply sign a contract but don't exchange any money in the context of forward contract you should also understand what credit risk default risk and counterparty risk mean these terms actually are all synonymous the idea being this when parties so coming back to my original example of a and b so when a and b sign this contract both parties are taking some credit risk why because let's let's look at a's perspective what is the credit risk for a the credit risk that a is taking that on day 90 party b will not deliver so that is the risk that a is taking and that's called credit risk sometimes this is also called default risk because it's the problem it's the the risk that that party b will default and this is also called counterparty risk because from a's perspective b is the counterparty the counterparty risk then is simply the risk that the counterparty will not deliver per the commitment or contract that's been signed similarly from b's perspective there is again credit risk slash default risk slash counterparty risk because from b's perspective what's the what's the risk the risk is that uh, that b will be ready to deliver the asset but a might not be ready to make the payment so again there is essentially the the message here is that uh, that there is risk from each party's perspective and the risk generally is called credit risk but you will also see the terms default risk and counterparty risk in the context of forward contracts these three terms are essentially synonymous now let's talk about how forward contracts are settled broadly speaking either a forward contract can be settled through delivery so in my earlier example this would mean that on day 90 party b actually delivers the shares of IFT or I talked about simply one share so one share of this stock to party A so this is called uh, delivery if if this forward contract is for some other commodity for example such as gold then in a delivery based where actually in the contract it will be specified whether it's delivery or cash settlement so if we specify delivery in our contract that means the short party has to explicitly deliver the asset or the underlying to the long a cash settlement is where we simply settle in cash so we look at the contract we look at what the actual price is on the on on this day 90 or on settlement day and then whoever owes cash makes that payment so I'll show you examples later of cash settlement but here we basically make a net payment and the contract is settled and finally some contracts can be settled early what exactly does this mean so let's go back to our simple example initially A and B signed this 90 day contract which was supposed to be settled after 90 days but let's say at day 45 party a wants to get out so party a says that okay i no longer want this this share so what can happen one way that one thing that can happen is both a and b agree on a certain cash amount so let's say that they both agree that a will pay dollars two to party b and both parties agree to end the contract now how we come up with this amount is outside the scope of the level one course you will see this in level two all you need to know is that if both parties agree then the contract can be closed before settlement and this obviously is one example of a early settlement another situation is where party a and b get into a offsetting contract 
so in our example a had taken a long position b had taken a short position so in a offsetting contract what can happen now is on day 45 so on day 45 if a wants to get out a can then a and b can get into another contract where a now takes a short position and b gets into a long position so here both parties have taken an opposite position so essentially this contract is closed out why because according to the original day zero contract a was supposed to buy the asset but on day 45 a is essentially selling the asset back to b uh, all suppose all transactions are supposed to be settled over here now there might be a certain cash exchange that takes place between a and b in order to in order to uh, get into this offsetting contract but again how that cash amount is determined is outside our current scope all you really need to know is one way of early settlement is for both parties to get into a offsetting contract and notice that when there is a offsetting contract then there is no credit risk because both parties have agreed on certain on a certain amount to pay each other and they have gotten out of the contract no party owes anything to each other and when no party owes anything to each other there is no credit risk and the final item on the slide is that you can also do an early settlement by getting into an offsetting contract with a, another party. The way this works is, so let's, let's say that you are party A and you got into a long position with party B. So party B has the short position and again on day 45 you want to get out of this deal. So if you want to get out of this deal, the first thing you do is you approach party B and see if you can either get into an offsetting contract or if you can pay some cash and get out. But let's say party B refuses. So then you need to get into an offsetting contract with uh, another party. So what you do on day 45 then is you take a short position with another party let's call that party c which now has a long position so essentially now you as party a have a contract with party b where you are long and b is short and you also have a contract with party c where you as party a are short and party c is long now here there is credit risk so even though you have an offsetting contract but there is a risk that C will not deliver, there is a risk that B will not deliver. So while you have created an offsetting contract, there is still credit risk when you create an offsetting contract with a, another party. So now we are going to talk about several kinds of forward contracts and in this, in this reading we are primarily focused on uh, on forward contracts with financial assets. So we will talk about forward contracts with equity, with uh, actually various kinds of equity such as it could be a stock, a portfolio, equity index. We'll talk about forward contracts with bonds, with interest rates and with currencies. Obviously a forward contract can be for anything. So if you get into a forward contract with, a f with another party to buy a car at a certain price on a certain date, that's also a forward contract but in this reading we are primarily focused on finance on forward contracts where the underlying is a financial asset so when we talk about an equity forward contract the underlying asset or simply the underlying could be a stock it could be a portfolio of stocks or it could even be a equity index let's see how this works and i've already given a example before but essentially building on that same example let's say that you get into a forward contract to buy thousand shares of ift common stock in 60 days for dollar ten thousand that means effectively in your contract you are agreeing on a contract price of dollars ten per share now what is your position are you long or short remember since you are getting into a position where you want to buy 
your position is long and here is what we are saying so if we are right now at time 0 what we are saying is on day 60 we are going to buy 1000 shares at a price of dollars 10 per share so that's our contract price we are essentially committing to pay ten thousand dollars and in exchange we the short party is committing to deliver a thousand shares if this is a delivery that is the short will actually deliver these shares now this this contract was signed on day zero now what is in it for you so since you got into this contract you are long notice that if the actual share price goes up to dollars 12 then you benefit why because the share price here let's say the actual price 60 days later the actual price is dollars 12 if the actual price is dollars 12 and you have this contract that says that you can buy for 10 so you will get each share for ten dollars and then you could go into the market and sell it for twelve so on a per share basis you have made two dollars and this illustrates the critical point that the long benefits when the price of the underlying goes up and similarly the short benefits if the price goes down and to see that let's say if the actual price was eight dollars over here then on day 60 if the price is eight the short now has a contract that says that he can sell you each share for ten dollars if the actual market price is eight he can go to the market buy the stock for eight dollars and then just deliver you a share where you still have to pay ten dollars per share so essentially if the actual price was dollars eight then the short makes two dollars per share so i'll just make it explicit that the short benefits when the price goes down so this is important now again to highlight the cash delivery versus uh, i'm sorry to highlight the difference between cash settlement versus delivery if this is a delivery that means that the short has to deliver the underlying shares on this day if this is a cash settlement then we just figure out who owes whom how much so if we had this situation then on a per share basis the short will give the long two dollars and obviously if the contract is for a thousand shares then the short will give the long two thousand dollars in cash and the contract will be settled now let's talk about uh, equity index forward contract so let's say again that you get into a long position on a 90 day KSE 100 forward contract so this is the most popular index in Pakistan so let me just draw this out now this is a 90 day contract again it is signed on day 0 and you have taken a long position with let's say a dealer the dealer for example might be UBL a large bank here in Pakistan so you go to UBL and you sign a contract that says that on that basically in the in the signed document the contract price against the index is 10,000 now this is the contract price so what this is saying is that that you need to on simplistically simplistically put the way you can understand this is you can think of this as uh, you can think of it as the index is just one big stock and you can think of this as the stock price so let's say that this is the index price that you have agreed to on this date so the long essentially will buy one share of the index at 10,000 rupees now and so so you're the long so you will buy one share of the index at 10,000 rupees but rather than working in terms of actual shares you also need to specify what's called a notional amount so you specify on this contract you specify a notional amount of of rupees 
10 million. So you have agreed on this notional principle. You have agreed that your forward price, your forward price or the contract price is equal to 10,000. Now how we come up with this price is again outside the scope of the level 1 curriculum. We will see this in level 2. But what you do, do need to know is how much money actually changes hands then on, 90, on day 90. Let's say that on day 90 the actual price of the index is 10,500. So essentially what has happened here is the index has gone up by 5%. So since the underlying, which is the index, has gone up, you, the long party, benefit. So you benefit because the index has gone up. And obviously the dealer in this case, which is UBL, uh, loses. But the question is, by how much do you benefit? And the answer is simple. The benefit amount is equal to the notional principle, which is 10 million, multiplied by the percentage increase in the index so or the or the percentage increase in index relative to the forward price so if the forward price was uh, the contract price was 10000 the actual index price on day 90 is 10500 the increase is 5% so your benefit is 10 million into 5% now Typically, index-based index-based contracts are settled in cash. So, since this is settled in cash, this is the amount that UBL, the dealer, will pay you. So, UBL, remember, had the short position, and you have the long position. And all these contracts are actually zero-sum game. Zero-sum game means that if one party loses then the other party benefits and vice versa. So here I also want to just illustrate one more point. You can also have a forward contract on a portfolio of stocks. So let's say that there is a portfolio that's worth currently worth 5 million and this let's say has 20 stocks in it. Now you can also get into a long or short position on this portfolio so say you are a portfolio manager and you want to hedge your risk so what you can say is you can take a short position where you say that you will sell this portfolio for dollars uh, 5.1 million in 90 days and you might call this a cash settlement so what have you done here all you have said is to the counterparty so let's say the counterparty is again some large financial institution so here you are simply getting into a contract to sell this portfolio for 5.1 million after 90 days and if the value of the portfolio now after 90 days is 5.1 million then no cash will change hands but what you are hedging your bets against or what you are hedging is the risk of the portfolio value going down so let's say that the stock market crashes and the portfolio value comes down to 4.1 million so you lose almost 20 percent on your portfolio but since your risk is so how did you hedge your risk here the way the reason your risk is hedged is even though the actual value of the portfolio is down but you have already gotten into a contract with the counterparty which is which is a dealer you've gotten into a contract to sell for 5.1 so essentially the benefit to you is 1 million why because market price is 4.1 million but you have the contract which says that you will sell for 5.1 million so in this particular case if this is a cash settlement then the counterparty simply will give you 1 million on settlement days on settlement date which is 90 days from today so effectively i hope you see the fact that all sorts of equity contracts whether they are with a index a, sim a single stock or a portfolio essentially all work the same way and you can simply if you have trouble de deciphering the three just imagine that everything is like a stock so if you just think of this index like a stock or this whole portfolio like a stock 
then the calculations essentially are similar for for the index for the stock and the portfolio now let's move on to bonds and we will talk first about a forward contract on the simplest kind of bond which is a zero coupon bond this again works very similar to equity forward contracts let's say you get into a hundred day uh, forward contract on a, on a table the underlying is a 10 million dollar worth six month table so if the table was just issued it will expire in six months notice that when we talk about forward contracts on t-bills or bonds of any sort clearly the forward contract duration needs to be less than the than the maturity period of the bond so we are covered here because the contract period is 100 days this contract is saying that the long is committing to buy 10 million worth of a six month t-bill at a price of 9.9 .9 million so the notional so in this contract the notional principle is is uh, is pkr 10 million the forward price is equal to uh, is 9.9 .9 million so essentially what that is saying is that the long party is going to buy 10 million dollar or 10 million rupee face value t-bills for 9.9 .9 million on this day now what happens actually on this day the long is the one that will buy and the long is going to pay this much the short will sell this uh, underlying and the price agreed upon is 9.9 .9 million now what happens if interest rates rise if during this period let's say that interest rates go up if interest rates go up then the price of the bond will go down so if the price of the bond goes down then the long loses and the short benefits so again this is typical when price goes down so for any forward contract th here the underlying is the bond if the price of the bond goes down that's bad for the long and good for the short on the other hand if the interest rate goes down then the price of the bond will go up which is good for the so for the long this is good and this is bad for the short later on we'll talk about forward contracts on interest rates which which work the other way around so i will talk about those later but i just want to plant in your head that here if the underlying is a bond then price going down is bad for the long good for the short and price going up is price of the bond going up is good for the long bad for the short so here we simply talked about uh, a zero coupon bond what about coupon paying bonds there the basic idea is the same the coupon bonds are priced based on say yield to maturity and the same principle holds if you get into a contract to buy a, a coupon paying bond for a certain price then if interest rates go down then the long party benefits because the price of the underlying goes up if you are dealing with bonds which have credit risk so for example if you are dealing with say triple b rated corporate bonds then your contract needs to specify what will happen in case the issuer defaults we don't need to get into the details all you need to know is that for risky bonds the contract needs to account for the possibility of default